Oh, say boom. Okay, so in any case. Did I start recording? I did. All right. So that's the guy. Fortunately, we have someone to speak French in here. So, Shamab was there. Used. It's used for finding uh, higher powers. Higher, higher powers of complex numbers and roots of complex numbers. Um, so, so say for instance I have this thing uh, like uh, uh, one, I don't know why I'd want to do this, but maybe I would, one plus the square root of three i, and I want to raise this to the twelfth power. Okay? Yeah, the i is not in the square root. Well, you would take 1 plus square root of 3 and square it first, and then you'd raise it again, multiply it again, times 1 plus the square root of 3, and then you multiply it again, then you multiply it again, and it would take you a lot of time, right? But this French guy, the Moabre, came up with a very good uh, formula for doing stuff like that if you can, can convert this, uh, this complex number into... Uh, into trigonometric form, okay? And so this is what his theorem says. It says z, where z is some comp complex number, uh, if, if z is if, z is equal to um, r times cosine theta plus i sine theta, then if I want to raise z to the nth power, that's just equal to r raised to the nth power times the cosine of n times theta plus i sine of n times theta. So, and like, so if you were using 12, you'd say r to the 12 cosine 12 times whatever theta, theta is. So I'll show you an example. Okay. You'll see it again. And it doesn't matter if you're in degrees or radians, just as long as you're consistent, you know, throughout, throughout the problem. So, for example, if I wanted to do raise uh, 1 plus the square root of 3i to the 12, the first thing I have to do is find theta. How do I find theta? Yeah, I'd have to do the tangent thing. So, so we know that tangent of theta is equal to the square root of 3, divided by 1, and is this angle, so is this, is this um, point in the imaginary plane, is it going to be in the first quadrant, second quadrant, third quadrant, fourth, first quadrant, right? Now if these were both negatives, the inverse of tan, uh, if I took the inverse tangent, it's going to give me a number in the positive, uh, in the first quadrant, so I would have to add 180 or, or pi radians to it, but in this case, since these are both positive numbers, we know that we're in the first quadrant. And then I could just take the inverse tangent of root of 3 to find out uh, that that is equal to, who knows, in degrees. Let's do this all in degrees. And no, not 30, 60 degrees. Okay? If you did that on your calculator, that you get our pi over 3 radians. Okay? Then I have to find the modulus r. And who can tell me how to do that? Well, you're going to have to find the length. Yeah, So it's going to be 3 plus 1, so it's going to be 2. Very good. So it's 1 squared plus root of 3 squared, which is equal to square root of 1 plus 3, which is 4, which is equal to 2. Right? Okay. So now to raise... So now I'm going to raise this thing to the 12th power. So z raised to the 12th is going to be 2 raised to the 12th, right? It's just r raised to that power times, times the cosine of n times theta. Well, n is 12 and theta is 60, so 12 times 60, anyone know what that is? What? 720, 
Because I know that like 6 times 12 is 72. You know what 12 times 12 is? 144. You know what 288 is? 12 times. Do you know what you call 144? Um, a gross. Okay. You know why you should never say 288 at the dinner table? Okay. Uh, I told you that one. Uh, two. I'm repeating myself. Okay. So I I I like that one. Seven hundred. I was doing that for the video. So um, two to the twelfth. Let's just leave it at two to the twelfth right now. I don't know what that is. So cosine of seven twenty. That's just twice around the unit circle. So what is the cosine at seven twenty? Four pi. What's the cosine of four pi? One. Okay. Ooh, look at this. What's the sine of 720? Zero. So I times zero. So I get two to the twelfth times. So I get two to the twelfth times one. Right? Is it, which is just two to the twelfth. So that's kind of weird. So what that is, if I took this thing and raised it to the twelfth power, I multiplied it by itself twelve times, I would get two to the twelfth power. Yeah? Isn't that cool? Um, so, and you could be, I don't know what two to the twelfth is. Something really big. Really big? Who wants to tell me what two to the twelfth is? Oh, it's, it's not that big. Four thousand and ninety-six. So, in that case, from an imaginary number or from a complex number that is an imaginary part, we get out a real number as the answer. So, like, kind of like what I was talking about, um, what I was talking about the other day. Um, so okay. So, the, the hard part of the Moff's theorem is when you have to go backwards. And it's not really that hard, but the formula looks a little bit... Um, Confusing. These are called complex roots. Complex roots of complex uh, complex numbers. And uh, so the nth roots nth root. So if z if z is equal to um, r, just like it was in the last problem. R times Z cosine theta uh, plus I sine theta, then the nth root of Z is equal to the nth root of R times the, and this is the formula, cosine of theta plus 2 pi K divided by N plus I sine of theta plus 2 pi K over N where K is equal to the, um, where K starts at 0, 1, 2, I guess we call these the natural numbers other than zero, okay? Zero dot 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 until I get to n, okay? Zero, one, two, three, n minus one. n minus one? n minus one, not n. n minus one. What the heck does this mean, okay? So, you'll see in a second. And this formula looks really ugly, but it's not, it's not as bad. Whoops! I need to shorten this, fix this, okay? I knew I should have looked at my notes. The parentheses need to go here. Cosine at theta plus 2 pi k over n, like this, okay? Plus I, the parentheses, you're taking the sine of that whole expression. So let me fix that, okay? So... It, it looks more like uh, I sine of, then in parentheses, goes theta plus 2 
2 pi, I never use the formula, but I write it, that's why I, I don't think it, maybe I should make this a square bracket, and this is square bracket over here, okay? So what does that mean? Um, I'll show you. Find the, find the fourth roots, the fourth roots of uh, 16. And you see, what do you mean the fourth roots of 16? There's no such thing as the fourth roots of 16. What's the fourth root of 16? Two. Two. Okay? But that's only one of the roots. If two is a real root, there's also another root of 16. What else times itself four times will give you 16? Negative, Negative two. Right? But there are two other ones that if I take, if I multiply them by itself four times, it will give you a uh, it'll give you 16. And those parts are going to be complex roots, okay? So, uh, so, um, <laughs> What is What? I'll show you in a minute. There are, there are, N complex roots there are N complex N roots of a complex number. What the heck? What does that mean? That means if you are taking the fourth root of six the fourth roots of sixteen you're going to have four inches. If you're taking the fifth root of 3i minus, or 3 minus 2i, you're going to have five inches. Okay, that's what it means. There's so many roots. So for <coughs> each complex number, if you take the cube roots, how many answers am I going to have? Three. Three. Okay, that's all that means. So how does this formula work? So if I have uh, the fourth roots of 16, so let's, uh, I'm going to have to shuttle back and forth, okay? First thing you do is you find uh, R. That's easy. Okay? What's R in this case? If uh, so, R is just six because R is going to be the square root of a squared plus zero i squared, right? So you're going to take sixteen square it, and then plus zero square it, and then you're going to take the square root of that. What do you get? Uh, not 16, you get, you get 16, right? Yeah. So then you want to, in front of this whole thing, goes the fourth root of 16. What is the fourth root of 16? 2, okay? So if you don't know that, you could do it on your calculator, or you could just leave it as the fourth root of 16, because a lot of times these won't come out as nice and even as this, okay? Now, this is what goes inside the parentheses. The first one, okay? So you have first root. First root is equal to 2 times the cosine of some number. So if you look at this, um, if you look at this formula, that number is cosine of theta plus 2 pi k. In this case, the first k that you plug in there is 0, okay? So what's 2 pi times 0? Zero? Zero. 0. What's theta equal to? Oh, I should probably draw a picture. What is theta to equal to <coughs> when my when my my um, complex number is 2? What's theta at that point? 0, okay? So I'm going to take the cosine of theta, which is 0, plus 2 pi k, which is 0, and I'm going to divide that by n, which is, what's n? How many roots am I trying to find? 4. So n is 4. So this is the cosine of 0 divided by 4. Yes? Okay. Cause, because if I'm over here, theta is equal to 0, right? What about 2 pi k? What about that 
we'll get 2 pi, k starts at 0, and it goes up until I get to 1 less than n. So in this case, so my first root, I'm going to have k equals 0. My second root, k is 1. My third root, k is 2. And my fourth root, k is 3. Okay? It's real, and there's really an easier way to think about it when you get to this. I'll get this, okay? Plus i, it's just exactly the same thing. So it's 0 over 4. And you could simplify that a little bit. That's 2 um, cosine of 0. What's the cosine of 0? 1. And what's the cosine of 0? So the first root is just 2 times 1, which, oh, which gives us the fourth root of 16, the real part, right? One of those real numbers. Yeah. Now the next one, okay, so the second root, okay, the way that looks is 2 times the cosine of theta, which is 0, right, plus 2 pi times 1. So what am I adding to it? 2 pi. 2 pi. But I'm dividing that by 4, okay? Plus 2 times, uh, no, 2 is still outside the range. I <coughs> times the sine of 0 plus 2 pi over 4. What's 2 pi over 4 equal to? Pi over 2, right? And so what I get is 2 times the cosine of pi over 2, uh, pi over 2, not 3, pi over 2, plus i sine of pi over 2. And then you say, what is the cosine of pi over 2? Root of, no, uh, uh, zero. It's okay. Just don't do it again. No. <laughs> cosine of pi over 2 is uh, zero. And sine of pi over 2 is one. Positive one, so I get one i, right? i times one, to be consistent. i times one, which gives me two i, right? Because two times zero is zero, plus two times i, like that, right? Two i. Next time, okay? So notice, I started at zero. I'll, I'll show you the method in a minute, okay? So then my third root, third root is going to be 2, and you don't have to go through this process every time, cosine of 0 plus 2 pi k in this case is 2, right? You with me there? Wait, hold on. I thought it was just the... No, that, that was first root. This was the second root, okay? Third is 2 times the cosine of 0 plus 2 pi. K is 2 in this case, divided by 4 again, okay? Plus I sine of 0 plus 2 pi times 2 divided by 4 again, okay? Which gives me 2 cosine of 4 pi over 4, which is what's 4 pi over 4? Pi, okay? Whoops, like that. 2 cosine pi plus i sine pi, okay? I don't have to put that pi in there, but that's what it is. Which is equal to 2 times, what's the cosine of pi? Negative 1. Negative 1. And what's the sine of pi? 0. So I get out negative 2, right? Okay? I meant. Okay, so it's 2 times negative 1 plus 0, which is negative 2. So there's my third root. What do you think my fourth root's going to be? Negative 2i. Negative 2i. So the fourth root, for it, kind of by symmetry and stuff, comes out to be negative 2i. And for it to find the fourth root, you would just plug in a 3 there, right? And you'd be finding 6 pi over 4, which is the same as 3 pi over 2, which would give you negative 2i. Now, there's an easier way to think about it, okay? So, what? K is, it's a number from zero, it starts at zero, goes up to one, goes up to two, goes up to three. Depending on how many roots you have, you start at zero and you, if you add the fourth root, you go up to three. 
Yeah. We had the bit three go up to four. Sorry, zero go up to four. Like the but the root you're finding yeah. minus one, right? Yeah, it's the number of the root you're finding minus one. But sorry, but, but there's an easier way to think about it, okay? You're, the R is pretty easy to find, right? Theta is pretty easy to find too, right? From the picture. So the first root, you just take theta and you divide that by whatever number of roots you're looking for. Okay, so if I were looking for the fourth roots, I would just take theta divided by four. Then what you do is you, you want to go what this represents, okay? So you have in the complex plane, here's i, here's the real numbers, okay? What this represents is four points in the complex plane. So you have 16, right? Which is out here. If I divide this up into its four roots, it makes the little flowers like this, okay? So, it, so it's symmetric, and so the way I could get those four flowers is by taking theta divided by four. That will give me where the first flower lies, good? You just think about it as flowers, okay? They're not really flowers, but if I take theta and divide it by four, and then I add one fourth of the circle to it, that will give me my other three roots. Okay, so in the next one, if theta over 4 equals 0, then I'm going to take 0 and add 1 fourth of 2 pi to it. What's 1 fourth of 2 pi? What's 1 fourth of 2 pi? Pi over 2, okay? So that's where this one lies, right? Then I'm going to add another pi over 2 to that, which puts me at pi. Then I'm going to add another pi over 2, which puts me at 3 pi over 2, and that's where all my roots, my roots are. Okay, so, so kind of to, without the formula. Okay, say I wanted to do something like I know, like uh, say I know that theta is equal to pi over pi over three. Okay, and I want the cube roots, cube roots, and I know that the nth root of, that the cube root of r, let's just say it's equal to 5. Just for instance, whatever this thing is. So the way I would find my first root, okay, um, and I want the cube roots, right? So I would take pi over 3 and divide it by, let's do it with degrees, okay? Let's say that theta is equal to 60 degrees, okay? Just to make your life easier. So th my first one, theta, is going to be equal to one-third of 60. What's one-third of 60? 20, okay? My second root, I'm going to add, I'm going to take 20 plus one-third of 360 degrees. See that? Okay, so that's going to be my next theta. What's one-third of 360 degrees? 120. Okay. My third root is going to be 120 plus another 120, which is going to put me at 240 degrees, right? So basically, and this is one root, two roots, three roots. Yeah. Yeah, it should be. Sorry. Sorry. 140. Good. And then 140 plus 120, thanks, Miguel. Which is going to be, could you please turn the music off? It's not quitting time yet. Oh, it's next door. <laughs> oh, I don't care! <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Oh, I wasn't class. That's okay. I heard some music there, so I added thing on. In any case, what this represents right, in, in the imaginary plane. So if so, what this represents is three points where this is equal to five, and this angle is 20 degrees. Okay. Then I'm going to add another 120 to that 
which puts me at 140 degrees, okay? Where this modulus is equal to 5, and that's 120, okay? I mean, that's 140, right? Then I'm going to add another 120 to that, which puts me at 260, okay? Do you see how those are symmetric? Okay, it would make a little flower if I were to put my little butterflies or, you know, I could call it a flower. So all you do is you take the, the theta, you divide that by whatever the, by whatever the um, number of the roots that you have, okay? And then you add one, if you're looking for the cube roots, you add one third of two pi or three sixty. And then you add another <coughs> one third of two pi or three sixty. The only thing that changes in each of those roots, the r doesn't change, the cosine or the sine doesn't change. The only thing that changes is the angle, and it goes up by 70 degrees. So one more, because I know you're, yes, ma'am. Um, yes. So, what if, hold on, what if I want these square roots? What if I want the square roots of pi over 4? What? Square roots means there's going to be how many roots? Two, right? So the first one would look like pi over 4 what? Divided by 2, okay? So if theta equals pi over 4, then if I'm looking for the square roots, theta 1 is going to be pi over 4 divided by 2, right? Divided by 2, which is equal to pi over what? Pi over 8, okay? Then theta 2 is going to be, you're going to take half of 2 pi. What's half of 2 pi? Pi, okay? And I'm going to add that to pi over 8, which is going to put me at how many pi's over 8? Pi over 8 plus pi gives you 9 pi's over 8, okay? 9 pi's over 8, like that, okay? So, if you're looking for the square roots, cube roots, whatever, you just find the angle, you divide by the number of roots that you're looking for, okay? So that gives you the first angle, right? And then you add whatever the multiple of 360 or 2 pi that you're looking for. You'll get some graphics. Is that all? Let me see what else I got. Ooh. So, We're going to do one more. Can I do one more? No. First, I have to see. Let it go. Let it go. Oh, I'm still on. Sorry. <laughs> well, we're going to move on. We're going to hide this somewhere if I can. Um, am I recording? I want to make sure I'm recording. So, uh, Find the three complex third roots, third roots of, um, so this is one that doesn't work out as neatly as the last one, uh, of four, four root of three minus four i. Right? So, no, no more singing. So the first R you're going to do is take the square root of 4 root of 3 squared, right? Plus negative 4 squared. Yes? Which gives you, probably it comes out evener if I wouldn't have chosen this one. You have to square the 4, you have to square the root of 3, and you have to square that 4 as well, right? Which gives you 16, yes? What's 48 and 16? 64, what's the square root of 64? 8. So this conveniently works out. So if, so if r equals 8, what's the cube root of 8? 2. Okay? So now we know what the cube root of 8, that's what goes in front of all your angles, right? Yeah. Okay, now I have to find theta. So I know that the tangent of theta is equal to negative 4 over 4 root of 3. 
Here we go. Ethan. So, how would I find theta, Ethan? You need to sit up here so you can focus this one? No. Okay. Uh, I don't think I have to draw a triangle. Or I can know my unit circle. This is negative 1 over the square root of 3. Good. What's that equal to? Negative root of 3 over 3. Where is tangent equal to negative root of 3 over 3? Down here. What's that angle? What is that? 330 degrees. It could be, I mean, tangent of this angle here, right? But the, the negative four. Uh, so this goes over four and down four, right? Yes. So you have to pay attention to what, where you are, okay? So this yes. is over here. If, if this were negative and this were positive, right, then you would still have the same negative root of three over three here, except you would then be in the second quadrant. So you have to be careful with that. Um, Casey, can you please stop playing video games on your computer, please, on your phone? Thanks. All right. So, um, <coughs> so this, what did I say? This was plus. This is minus. This is plus, right? Okay. So what? So theta we decided is equal to 333. So I'm going to take that theta for my first theta comma 1 of my first root is going to be 330 divided by how many roots I want, okay? And I want three roots, so I'm going to divide that by 3. That's 110, okay? Then my theta 2 is going to be 110 plus how much? One third of 360, since I'm looking for cube roots. So it's going to be 110 plus 360 divided by 3, which is 230. Okay. My theta 3 is going to be 230 plus 360 divided by 3, or another 120 degrees, which is going to put me at Where's that going to put me? 350. 350. And check to make sure that makes sense, right? The first one is at 110, so that's kind of over here. The second one is at 230, which is somewhere over here. And the next one's at 350. Does it look like they're kind of symmetric if I do it right? Would they look kind of symmetric? They should all be 120 degrees apart, right? Kind of like a pinwheel. They have to do that. Now, to write my roots, all I have to do is go root 1, you just put the nth root of r in front, that goes all, always at front, and then you go cosine of 110 degrees plus i sine of 110 degrees. And then your next root, r2, the same 2 goes in front, cosine of 230 degrees plus i sine of 230. And then the next one is going to be R3 equals 2 times cosine of 350 degrees plus I sine of 350 degrees. Okay? Can you do that? It's not that horrible. Alright, the formula looks horrible, but if you kind of just take the angle, divide it by whatever the root you are, and then add you know, whatever multiple of 360 you need to add, then you'll get it. All right, your homework is, um, it, it looks bad, but it's not as bad as it looks. I mean, um, um, yeah, you have to do 65 twice. Okay?